Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. Um, so this is a little bit of a different episode. Today I'm going to be showing off something I've been working on. It's a game engine that I'm working on and want to give a tutorial on too afterwards. So I'm writing this in TypeScript using Electron, which is basically just a Chromium browser with the bare essentials so that you can build um, a basic application, a desktop application using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and everything. And so you have things like Atom. Um, I don't have that installed, but if you've ever seen Atom, that's also built using Electron. And so you can build some pretty cool web or desktop applications with it. And I'm really enjoying using it so far. Still working out a few bugs and everything, but I'll show you what I got as of right now. So this is just an empty project right now. But you can see that this is where the game view port is going to be. And then right here, I'm going to have some tile set data and some other things. Uh, right now, what you can do is you can go and click a new project. And then you can click into here, choose your directory. And so I'm going to put this in Jade. And I'm just going to call this um, test project like two, because I think I already have some other ones. And then you can click create project and it creates a new project folder. So if I go into here, you see it created a whole folder inside this directory with the assets, level, scripts, all that stuff, and then this .jade file, which is pretty simple. So if I just open this up, <laughs> it literally just holds test data right now. So if I find a test uh, jade file right now, then I just assume that it's a jade project, this whole directory. Uh, we'll be filling that in later, but you can also go into here and click open project, and I will open up project that I've messing, been messing around with. So you just double click it and you can see that it's now a lot more like filled up. So the viewport actually works. If I click, I can place this object that I have in the mouse cursor. Um, and then if I go into preferences, I can change this grid width and then save that. And now it matches this sprite perfectly. So like I said, few bugs, these ones don't line up once you change the grid width and everything. I don't know if that's a bug though. I might keep that. I plan on having it so that you can move around these objects and everything. You also see we got these sprite sheets over here where you can change through and everything. And you can also import a new sprite sheet. So if you hit new, you can go through. I'm just going to re-import one sprite sheet I already have. And so then you just give it the tile width, the tile height, the spacing, the columns, and the size. So like how many columns are in the sprite sheet, what's the size, like how many sprites are there, and then like the tiles width and height and spacing between each of the tiles. Vertical and horizontal spacing needs to be the same. So then I'll hit create tile set, and it recreates this one right here. Uh, right now you can't click on these and change what you're actually holding. It's my next adventure is trying to get that part working, which shouldn't be too bad. But I also think it's pretty cool to see how I'm storing this tile set data because if I go into the project I'm in currently and you go into here, you see that I've got all these different uh, the images and then I also have these dot tile set files and these look like this where it basically contains all that data that I just talked about. And one of the things I noticed when I was testing was it's really annoying to go in and try and open up a project every single time. So I made it so that when you close out, it saves whatever project you were in most recently. And then once you restart, uh, it opens back up to that project. So you'll see that we're still in the tester project. You can see that up in this upper left hand corner and you can switch projects from there. But the way I did that was pretty simple too. So if I just go into the actual application code, which is in here, uh, you can see inside of startup.prj, it just says project root. And so this is just like the most recent project that you were in and then it gives you the project name so that I can just open up to the directory you were in. And I do some other fancy stuff and everything too, going through like all of the tile sets that you had loaded in just to make sure that I load in all the correct tile sets again, which I just like sort of go through this directory and look and see what you have in here and then reload them over on the right. And so this is basically where it's at right now, but the way I want it to go in the future is I do want to have some tile set layer stuff up here where you can switch layers and everything, possibly be an extension of this. I'm also thinking about adding like an inspector on the bottom slash log. So this will be where all your data is logged whenever you log information. And then this will also be where you can browse your file directory and everything, create new scripts, create new data and everything. And it should be imported automatically. 
And for the inspector, I want it to be where if you like place an object in the scene, you can click on it and then the inspector will show you all the data about that object, like uh, what sprite it's using, the components it has. You can click onto each component, a lot like Unity. I'm going for something like Unity, except a little bit simpler and more 2D based for sure. And then once you have that inspector, you can change the position, everything. I want all the values to be bound directly to the object so that every time you click on a new object, it's going to show you exactly what's on that object. So, but this is the basis. This is what I have done so far. Uh, I've only been working on it about two weeks and I'm learning all this stuff brand new. Like I said, using TypeScript and Electron. So this is just a little bit of the code. This is TypeScript and Electron works really easily. So if I just go into the index file, if I look for that. This is the main part of Electron that you need. And so what you do is you set up your menu, which I have a menu set up. Uh, and that's the bar up here. So just binding these to what you want the function to be called when you click on one of these and everything. And then after you set up your menu, you just go through and you say your options. So what's the width and the height of the window. And then you create your window. I created a little window manager class for when I create new windows and everything. And then I'm maximizing it right now. Then you have this thing called IPC. And so this is basically the communication between the window and the contents on the window. So it's, it's sort of like a back end and a front end if you know web engineering. So you have the back end, which is what contains all your data. You can communicate with the file system and everything in the back end. Then you have the front end, which is purely what's on the screen and what you can do on the screen. So I have to create these functions and send them through the inner process protocol or something like that, <laughs> inner process channels or something, IPC. And so I basically say um, on whenever they send this function, do a new tile set. And then I give it the function I want them to call. And to send an event, I just say like IPC or I say window.webcontents. I would say something like win.webcontents.send. And then I would say like uh, if they had a new tile set function and then I would give it like any data that I wanted to and then they would take all that data and deal with it as they need it. So it's really cool learning about this new stack and everything and just getting to the point I'm at. I'm learning a lot too about things you wouldn't think about when you're doing this. And my focus with this too is to focus a lot on level editor. I want it to be a nice level editor where it's pretty customizable and really focusing on user usability of it for somebody who doesn't know coding especially. And so focusing on that is definitely going to give me a different output than if I were just working on like making a functional game engine that I could use to just code a game in. So if you guys like this, leave a comment, maybe telling me what you think I should add. And if you like, if you think I should make more videos updating you occasionally about what I'm doing with this and everything, just let me know. So, but this is all I have for now. Hope you guys like this. If you did, please hit like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Thanks. See you.